Hello YouTube, this is Frugal and here we are at last with the full review of GoFlight's GF Pro Yoke and their TQ6 throttle system. Now I know I put up the unboxing video earlier this week, but I have actually had this now for about two months. That unboxing video was filmed at the beginning of November. So. In terms of simulation hardware, there is a full range that you can explore with your wallet, starting at the $20 entry-level joysticks, all the way up to tens of thousands of dollars of custom-made home cockpit replica extravagance. This is nothing like that, but it is very high-end compared to an entry-level joystick. So, at $750 for the yoke and over $400 for the throttle system, the question we want to answer in today's review is, is this kind of investment worth it? Does a setup as high-end as this really justify the cost and make your simulator experience all the better? Let's find out. Okay, so let's start with the piece of kit that you all are most interested in seeing, which is the GF Pro Yoke. This is modeled on a 737NG yoke. It is the same size in every respect. It is pretty much a replica, in fact, of the 737NG yoke, but with some concessions to gaming. Let's go through all the controls and all the features first, and then I'll talk about the sturdiness and the build construction. First of all, you have this very obvious metal plate here, which has some handy checklist on it. I thought that was a little gimmicky when I first started using it, but I actually grew to really rely on this. It's, it's actually very useful. More to the point though, because it's metal, you can clamp stuff to it. So you can buy a very cheap bulldog clip for about 50 cents, 50 pence, wherever you live, and then clamp your charts to the front of the yoke. I don't have another yoke that you can do that with, and I love that. Small thing, but I love it. In terms of controls, on the right hand side here, this thing that looks like a, an eight way hat or a point of view hat is not. It's actually a mouse pointer, much like the nipples you get on the notebook. So you move this and it moves the cursor on the screen. So in a 3D cockpit in FSX or X-Plane, you can move the cursor around with this and then click the button to effect a left mouse click. In theory, that's a really great idea. In practice, not so much. You're actually doing it with your right thumb, and it's very, very hard to be precise with your right thumb. I don't know about you, but I, I haven't had a lot of practice doing anything in terms of precision with my thumb. That's more something you have your fingertips doing. So it takes a lot of practice and getting used to. In fact, I actually got to the point where I just didn't use that at all. So not very useful there. Here we have an autopilot disconnect switch, and just like the rest of the joystick, uh, rest of the joystick, just like the rest of the yoke, it is very, very sturdy in construction. You cannot accidentally press this autopilot disconnect switch. It has got a very heavy spring behind it. You need to give it some force in order to trigger that switch function, which is very cool. Up here, two trimmer switches. I tended to use the right hand one as my aileron trim. Uh, sorry, my elevator trim, and the left hand one is my aileron trim. Again, like this autopilot disconnect, they're very sturdy, very solid, and require quite a whack. You can he actually hear the click. It's a very, very solid click to get those to work, which is great. Underneath here, easy to miss, this looks like a button, but it's not. This is an eight-way hat, so this is your point of view hat, and you can use that to look around in the cockpit or assign them to other functions if you're using something like Track IR. On the front of the yoke, we have two triggers right here. A bit of a problem with those in that both triggers actually are the same button. So the left trigger is the same as the right trigger. They're not independent buttons. They're actually used on the real joystick as push to talk keys. And the idea being that no matter what you're doing in the cockpit and which side of the cockpit you're on, you can always, with one hand on the yoke, trigger push to talk and still have your other hand free. It's somewhat useful in that respect, but you know, we're used to having yokes and controllers with a ton of buttons. This does not have them. Other than that though, we are looking at an all metal construction. Everything from the yoke to this metal plate on the front to the case here is solid metal. This is very heavy. Once I clamp it to the desk with these two clamps underneath, it does not budge. Um, I had read some reports of people saying it does tend to slide around a bit. It really doesn't for me ever. Now I have a glass desk, so I was a little bit worried about clamping this to that desk in the some concern there that this being all metal and having metal clamps that would actually crack or shatter the desk. It doesn't. There are rubber feet you can put on the bottom of these clamps and that softens the blow a little bit when clamping it. But beyond that, the general weight of this is, is such that it just doesn't move. Now in terms of actual use, it is a very heavy spring to pull and push this yoke in. And given the weight, it actually takes I don't know that it takes a bit of force, but it's quite solid in terms of rotating left and right. And that translates to really, really nice flight. It's not like anything I've ever used before. Flying an aircraft with this 
feels a lot more precise, incredibly precise in fact, compared to say a cheap yoke or a cheap joystick which have a very light spring in them. I had no problem getting to grips with this and in fact the immersion that you get from using this is astounding. Because it's so big, because it's so heavy, because it feels so solid, you really do feel like you're at last flying a real aircraft which is fantastic. Now in terms of the buttons, and there being so few of them, I initially thought that was going to be a big problem for me. I am a Track IR user, I do have preset views in EasyDark and FSX, so I need buttons to cycle through my views, I need a button to reset Track IR, if I'm filming I need a button to disable Track IR, it actually turns out it's not so much of a problem once you get used to it. Bear in mind that they've tried to go the replica route with this yoke. So on the real 737NG, they don't even have a hat switch, they don't need to look around with using a button, they just turn their heads. So while there are concessions to gaming on this, they've tried to keep it pure and as accurate to the original 737 yoke as possible. And once you get used to it, it's actually not a big deal. I did use these triggers on the front as push to talk, I did use this button as autopilot disconnect, I did use these as trims, and then I just tended to use the hat switch here for basically pull down, I would disable track IR or recenter track IR, and then left and right to cycle through my views. It worked out just fine. So with all that done, let's take a quick look at the TQ6. Okay, the TQ6 throttle. This is a very, very interesting product. In fact, I find this more interesting than the yoke in some respects. Um, it's actually very hard to film this, so I'm going to be balancing it up this way for a little while, then I'm going to lay it down upside down. The reason it's hard to film is because of this, the clamp. Now, the clamp is an additional uh, amount of money that you need to spend in addition to the TQ6. Now, GoFly actually do a package, which is the yoke, the throttle, and that clamp, and I think it's a rounded, discounted price of about $1,000, but bear in mind, you might need the clamp if you're running on a desk. With that clamp on, it's quite front heavy. It wants to topple over, which is why I'm holding it. What you actually have here is a six-axis throttle with four buttons, if you can believe it. So here are the axes, obviously. I've got my spoiler axes here, engine one, two, three, and four here, and the flaps lever here. Those are your six axes. The buttons are actually the reversers. Now I thought that these reversers would be full analog levers, much like the flaps and the engines, but they're not. What happens is as you slide these down, they trigger a button at the top here. So button one, button two, button three, and button four. So in the sim, you're actually assigning reverser switches to these buttons. Not a big problem, it sounds really bad, but it's actually not. In using it, it really, there are very few instances where I want proportional control of the reverses. After I touch down in my 737 or my 777, I pretty much want full reverse until I slow down, and then I can knock them off. So being a switch is not a big deal. But you will notice that just like the yoke, everything except for these handles is metal construction. So a metal frame, metal sliding grooves here, the shafts themselves are metal, everything is metal, everything is very high quality, produced to an incredibly high standard, hence the cost. Now I'm gonna lay this down so I can show you some other little features here. I'm gonna turn this upside down. When you get this, it's supplied with these handles that you can see here. So this is suitable for a 747. You've got four engine control there. Obviously, you can fly a 727 or a 737 with this as well, without any big deal. What I would do for the 737s and the 7, yeah, the 737s, is I would actually just assign engines one and two, but it feels so cool to actually grab these solid metal levers and move them. I would just grab all four, even though only two of them work. It just feels kind of cool in a nerdy way. But in addition to that, it is supplied with a full set of levers for a prop aircraft. So there are two throttle levers right there, two black ones. Now, I got called out on the last video that I was throwing these on the table. I'm not throwing them on the table. They are metal, they are heavy, it's a wooden table. Look, if I just gently put it down, it sounds like I dropped it, I didn't. They are heavy metal objects. So, two, <laughs> there you go again. Two power levers. Over here we have two prop levers. And then finally, two mixture levers. Now changing these is very much like changing just the knobs on a Cytec throttle. If you have a Cytec throttle, you know that you have the levers which don't come out and you just pull the knobs off. It's similar to that. I will try and do this upside down. Bear with me if I get it wrong, but let's try with this one here, the spoiler handle. Just pull it and it comes straight out. There is a plastic bit in there which the lever slides into. So let me prop this up so I can see what I'm doing. Let's see where that... Uh, slot is, and I grab one of these uh, power levers, probably the wrong way around, you just line it up with that slot and then just push. See that? 
I'm gonna probably put video over this of me changing all the levers for real when it's attached to my desk. It is a no-brainer to change all the levers on this from full jet with reverses to a twin engine Baron or Duke or whatever you wanna fly. No time at all. It's very, very easy to do that and very painless and pretty damn cool. In terms of connections, just like the yoke, there is a single USB socket on the back. It takes a large USB plug here. USB cables are supplied for both the yoke and the throttle and into your computer it goes. Using this, in most of the sims, in fact all of the sims was very painless, there is a set of drivers that you can download from GoFlight for this in particular, not so much the yoke, and that lets those drivers, that driver suite, automatically configure reverser assignments for these reverses, sorry, for these reverses at the bottom here. So you don't need to do anything in FSX. In X-Plane, you just go ahead and assign them as buttons. It works every bit as simply as any other controller. It just shows up as a six axis GoFlight throttle controller. Now aside from all those handles, You'll remember from the unboxing, I got a bag of bits and I wasn't sure what they are. Here they are here. I've used some of them. What we have here, it's going to be hard to show you, but there are mounting holes on the base of this and on the front of this, in fact, all over this. So if you are building a home cockpit, this and the yoke, in fact, can both be mounted permanently into that cockpit. But if you're not, then what these bits are for are really to soften the blow of the clamp, I found. So I actually managed to put a little rubberized thing here and a rubberized bar here so that when it clamps to my glass desk it doesn't scratch it break it chip it or in other ways shatter it which is very cool so there's basically a bunch of add-ons here to either plug the holes up with plastic bits or add rubberized grips or rubberized feet or whatever you need basically anything that you would want to do with this in terms of mounting or fitting it to your cockpit your desk or whatever is accounted for with these bags of bits very thoughtful on the part of GoFlight Anyway, with that done, let's round everything up and I'll tell you my actual final review impressions of this whole setup. Okay, time to get down to brass tacks. We've done the overview of all the hardware. What do I actually think of all this? Given that these components all separately are well over $1,000, even though GoFlight do have a package of them bundled for about 1000 is it worth it? Does it add that much to the flying experience? Yes. Absolutely. This is without doubt, without doubt, the best yoke and throttle set I have ever used in a simulator. It truly is. Um, it, it's, it's hard to describe. Let's look at the yoke first of all. The heaviness and the solidness of that yoke means you can't accidentally feed an input in. You can't accidentally nudge it backwards or accidentally nudge it sideways, which you can with lighter yokes like CH or Cytec. Um, that's one of the big features of the yoke more than anything else. The uh, amount of heft and solidness that it has. I mentioned flying X-Plane, I think, in the unboxing video that this would be good for flying X-Plane because it feels so hot, so solid. I was absolutely right in that assumption. I hadn't used this when I unboxed it. That was a, a proper live unboxing. When I got in X-Plane, many of you will know, as I said in that previous video, X-Plane aircraft can be somewhat twitchy and you gently move the yoke and the aircraft will literally whoosh upwards into the sky. That doesn't happen with this because you can't do that. It weighs so much and it's so solid. You cannot just accidentally get the nose climbing skywards or drop it groundwards. You can't do that. Um, similarly, coming into land and getting that flare on those big jets is a dream with this yoke because it is so solid and so precise about everything you do. The 727, sorry, 737 X-Plane video I did a couple of weeks ago was done with this yoke. The last 777 video I did was done with this yoke. The two defining factors of those videos are the landings. I urge you, go watch the landings in the X-Plane 737, Fly J-Sim 737 video and the last 777. You will notice they are smooth as silk, the best landings I've ever done on camera. That's thanks to this yoke. It is the single most precise, awesome, awesome simulator yoke I have ever used. Let's look at the throttle quadrant. Initially, when I first clamped this to the desk, I was a little worried that the throttles would be flimsy. Although they are metal in construction, and they don't flex, okay? They have no flex in them. Once they're mounted into the throttle itself, there is a little bit of um, movement. Let me show you. If I grab the speed brake here, Sorry, flaps. You can see, you see it? Kind of twangs a little bit. That's because they're mounted into a, a plastic bracket inside here, and that plastic bracket can move. You can see there's quite a little bit of movement there. My concern with that is that grabbing all the power levers and pulling them down, I would get an angle on some of those further out power levers and cause them to scrape against the frame of the TQ6. That doesn't happen. 
I've never had that happen, but that was my initial concern. Once you have this thing set up the way you want it, with the levers you want, whether it's twin engine aircraft or four engine jet or whatever, it just feels so right. It really does feel so right. They, the levers take a little bit of force to move them. I mean, you can move them with my fingers, but you can feel resistance when you do that. They are kind of not notching into position, but you need to push through a gate or something to get them to move into position. They feel very solid. They feel very professional, and I think that's the key. That is really where the price differential of this compared to anything else comes in, is they feel professional. The yoke and the throttle system combined feel just right. They feel like proper simulator gear, not video game gear. Um, that's really all I've got. It is expensive. It is pricey. If you can afford it, much like if you're a golfer, um, I was talking with my wife about this before we started this video and I did a car analogy in the previous video. I'm gonna do golf this time. Flight simulation is a hobby, much like golf. There are people that will spend $100 on a full set of golf clubs and be very happy people and that's fantastic. There are people out there who will spend thousands per golf club and that's fantastic too. This is kind of the same thing. If you're into simulation, you can spend anywhere from a few hundred to a few tens of thousands on your gear. If you put it in that context, this isn't that expensive at all. Even so, it is higher end, it is out of the reach of most people. But if you are able to do it, or you're willing to save up, and you're that committed to your simulator experience, I highly recommend you do it. Now because of that, because this is the first time we've ever reviewed anything like this on this channel, GoFlight were very, very kind and have given you a discount code. If you are interested enough to go ahead and buy either or both of these things on the GoFlight site, when you go to check out, enter FRUGAL10. I'm gonna put it on the screen right here. FRUGAL10, that will give you 10% off. Given that GoFlight do a lot of discounts throughout the year, particularly this time of year, it's being filmed at Christmas, you can probably get yourself a nice little saving. As always, my name is FRUGAL. Tell me in the comment section below, how dedicated are you to your simulation hobby? Would you consider buying something like this? Have you already, or have you gone way beyond anything I can even dream of? Thanks for watching, see you next time.